Welcome to Privilege Catamarans America. I'm Rob Poirier. It's Sunday morning at the Miami Boat Show and it's raining hard outside. So we thought we'd take advantage of this downtime to do an interview with Alex. Alex is the captain of this beautiful 510 Sisu. So Alex, why don't we start this little discussion with some of your background, just so people understand the type of experience you've had, because we know that your experience is pretty pretty varied. So how did you find yourself here today? So uh, I started in 2010, I started sailing in my own boat and I crossed my first Atlantic in a 28 foot monohull. And since then I, I started meeting people in my way and, and they see my, my tiny little boat and they say, oh, if you cross the Atlantic in that boat, you can be my captain. So it, it happened just by accident. So I started working in bigger boats. And since then, I, I don't stop uh, sailing around. So probably that with Sisu was my seven Atlantic. I made it in, in both ways and I sail in the Pacific. I sail many different boats, uh, different brands in many different conditions with uh, little to no crew. But you have had a lot of experience with catamarans and yeah, specific most ones. most of my experience is with catamarans. And I understand you've worked with some of the larger charter operators as well. Yeah. So from that, how did you become the captain of this particular boat? That happened, I was uh, teaching the owner uh, how to operate a motorboat and we, we engaged in a conversation about sailing around the world and, and he fell in love with the idea. And then we started looking for the right boat for the project. Did you play a role in the decision to own a privilege? Uh, I would say 90% of the decision. That's why I asked you the question. So this interview has been compromised by the fact that you sailed across the ocean in a 28-foot no. boat. So your sanity is going to be in doubt. So we'll proceed nonetheless. <laughs> so, so Al, the reason for this discussion is the fact is when you told me during the last 12 months you've sailed 9,200 nautical miles, I thought this is a great opportunity to really discuss the actual sailing of a Privilege 510. Because again, you've been able to sail this boat in all conditions and in, it really in a very short time. I mean, as you know, few people will sail 9,000 no. nautical miles in nine years, let alone in 12 months. So why don't we start at the beginning? First and foremost, the question I'm always asked about this boat, and this is a question everybody selling boats at boat shows are questioned day, all day long. And I think it's the wrong question. They'll say, how fast will this boat go? But you and I both know as a cruising boat, the number that actually matters is a daily average, your 24-hour average. Can you speak on that to us? Yeah, people always always look at the wrong numbers. They are thinking about speed, like if if in in a passage making speed is super important, what you want to do is to have a good average during the days because you are planning to do long distance. So. Uh, in a long distance passage to me, if, if I'm capable of making 160, 175 miles, I, I will be super happy and, and that boat make meet that expectation. And that's like not paying too much attention to the sailing plan. Right. So it's just throwing the sails there and just... This, this is the important point. I mean, for the, the typical person making a passage, they're not in a race. So they want to be cooking meals, yeah, fishing. They want to be fishing. Right. Yeah. And this is the comment I heard you make to somebody the other day about the fact that you can put the sails up without worrying about trim too much and still easily achieve those 160, 170 numbers yeah. was important. Now, what if, it, what if I was in a situation with this particular boat and I was, what would you consider a daily average if you were working at performance on the boat? Yeah, if, if we are like, Playing with the ball, trying to get the best performance, it, it really surprised me because I was expecting her to be more of a cruising, like a slow type of boat. But if you fly the asymmetric and, and you are looking at the trim in the sails and you are looking for the performance, you can take 10, 10 and a half knots, easy, super easy. Right. Then in, during the surfing, you are doing 12 to 14. And what happens to your daily average? I make a few days like 200 plus, 210, 212. Right. Uh, it it so, increases exponentially. Yeah. Then always is the same. If, if you have uh, another good crew with you and you feel comfortable leaving a spinnaker on the night, 
uh, that's going to increase your right. your average like right. by a lot. Right. <clears throat> exactly. You know, this this is an important point to be made to people thinking about <laughs> buying a boat for long distance cruising. It's always great to get a screen a screenshot of surfing and showing this explosive number, but that doesn't really reflect your daily average, which is the only number that matters in cruising and sailing. Yeah, I can I can show you screenshots of fourteen knots, but right. that's not real. It's that's just really like right. ten exactly. seconds of right. exactly. uh, surfing. So let's talk more specifically about sails. So it's always been our understanding with a good boat like this that more the more sails you have, the better off you are. You're going to sail more. I, yeah. I often hear about people buying boats oriented towards performance, and they'll tell me they want to sail more. But I've had some of the world's most famous sailors comment that if you want to sail more, own more sails. And so what we've done with this boat, of course, is it came standard with a full main and Genoa, but also a stay sail. And this particular boat flies a code zero. Another question I'm asked all the time is, how is the upwind and downwind performance? So let's talk, even though most cruisers aren't going to weather deliberately, you're still going to have to point once in a while. Yeah. Let, let's talk on that subject. How well does the boat go to weather? It does, it does pretty good because it's a heavy boat that it, it stays on the water. It is not that boat that is flying waves and, and just pounding and, right. and making the right uncomfortable and and it points to the wind in a decent manner uh, you can make 45 50 degrees without losing right. a lot of performance right you can point a little bit more but then the boat is going to start being what what sails are you flying in those typically in those conditions uh, i used to sail the the jeep and if the wind is more than 20 knots, I used to have first reef in the mainsail. Uh, and then depending if it's more than that, I, I just put the storm jib on. You put the storm, just, just the storm jib. Yeah. Okay. I've seen videos of yours where you literally have code zero, Genoa. Everything. <laughs> and st everything's flying. Yeah. W where is the benefit in that? You create a... Sails are like the wind planes, right. the wings. They they are they they have the same principle. Is the theorema of Bernoulli. So you want to create suction, and you you achieve that by having the shape of the sail. So if you create, uh, you have three different sails. You are creating wind tunnels in between the sails. So right. you are creating more suction, and that gives you more speed. And in what conditions did flying multiple head sails improve your sailing? Was uh, it also not just, uh, because of course, we always have to stress that performance isn't just about a, a, a speed. Performance is also about comfort. Honestly. It's about comfort and it's also about the how steady you can make your boat go. Because if you have, depending the wave condition, the wind condition, if you have more power in your nose, boat is going to follow the power, so autopilot right. is going to work less, right. and the boat is going to be much steadier in the course. Right, right. That's fantastic. So now let's talk about downwind performance. Um, I know you fly with, you have a spinnaker on board. So we have a, a two asymmetric. Okay. And w where and how do you gain the best performance going, you know, downwind? In that particular boat with that particular sail, I, I use it all the way from 80 degrees okay. to 165. I, I don't like to sail to go dead downwind. The, the performance of the boat is just bad, and the mainsail makes shade on the spinnaker, so it so is not. I understand. Going. I, I've had a lot of customers who love to go dead downwind because they just find it comfortable. But for you, you find that it compromises performance too much to just go dead downwind. And, and it compromised performance and it compromised the comfort a little bit because uh, the boat moves in a weird manner. When it has the wave just in the back and it rides the surfing, it, it tends to just do that kind of... Right, right. That's so if, if you move 20 degrees and you take the wave more in your side, the boat tends to go faster. And at the end of the day, when you make numbers, you make 20% more miles, 30% more miles, but you win two knots, two and a half knots, so you are going faster. So one other subject that, that I really wanted to talk to you about the most is because you've confirmed something that I've always imagined about this boat. For those that have watched our other videos, they've learned that our boats are set up such that you can run absolutely everything from the helm. That, and 
you've commented that you've moved this boat a lot, forget shorthanded, you've moved this boat many, many miles all by yourself. Yeah. Could you talk on that subject a little bit? Yeah, it's a, it's a really well designed helm, so you, you have everything you need on the helm, and then in the other side, if you are planning to dock, if you prepare the maneuver with time, you put your fenders, your lines, and you plan to go in port side, uh, you can make it yourself because you can leave the helm for one second, throw the first line and then use your engine to... Well, the, the docking is a big bonus, but I'm just as impressed by the fact that you're sailing the boat by yourself. In fact, one of the things when we moved the boat with you from Nassau here to Miami, um, I made a point of standing back and, and having you filmed on our camera, on our phone, dealing with the code zero by yourself. Because as you know, all the other sails have all controls right at the helm, with the yeah. exception of your spinnaker winches are further aft. But you manage, you manage to rig the boat in such a way that you were able to deploy and recover that code zero yeah. literally alone. I should point out that one of the upgrades we're making to the boat now is we're beginning to add electric furling systems for the code zero so that even that will reduce that single line Probably. Yeah, that, that's going to be an improvement, uh, especially to the risk of something going wrong and, and yeah. creating yeah. a mess. Well, you know, I'm always pointing out to people that the, the furling systems aren't just about making the boat easier to sail. They're about more safety and reliability. The fact is those electric furlers on sails are far more reliable than drum, you know, with line type furlings. Yeah. There's far more chance of having a, a, you know, a mishap with that. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So the other thing I want to talk to you about is actual sails because something happened on this boat. When this boat was sold a few years ago, uh, Privilege was working with Elstrom sails, which yeah. are good sails. But in the last 18 months, we switched yards and the response to better sales. This is an example of where sales really matter, the quality, yeah. cut, and construction of the sales. So you blew out your code zero yeah. and you've replaced it with a new code zero from one sales. Yeah. What has been that experience? It's been great. I, I, I was really surprised about how different uh, uh, change of brand and, and cut and, and material could right. make a, a big, big difference. Right. To me, even this was an eye-opener to me that, that many of the captains, owners, but even professional captains, for example, we have a gentleman at the boatyard who does all the commissioning and sea trialing these boats. And when the first boat was, you know, was equipped with those one sails, he said, you've got a new boat. This yeah. is a remarkable difference. So you would agree that this yeah. change of sail has made yeah. a big difference. 100%. Yeah, it's yeah, fantastic. And well, that's, that's terrific. Well, Alex, thank you very much. You've enjoyed Welcome. talking to you. We'll look forward to talking to you some more, and maybe we'll get to sail together again in the near future. Sure. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us today, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you again very soon. These are very exciting days at Privilege. A lot of changes are taking place at the boatyard, and we'll be talking about that very soon. I'd like to invite you to come and see the very first 650 that will be splashed this spring at the boatyard. There will be an open house on April 19th, 20, and 21st, and this is a chance not to just see the new 650, but also to see a brand new 580, as well as a new three cabin 510. So we hope you join us there.